this moment for Jesus. He's baptized, that's a little odd, but he's baptized and then he's praying and some, somewhere in the midst of this, he hears this voice, you are my son in whom I am well pleased. That is a terrific example of a blessing. Jesus has been blessed by God. Some of you may remember a few weeks ago, we looked at this topic of blessing, and if you'll allow me, being a bit of a teacher, I would like to spend the day, this, our time together this morning reviewing a little bit. It is such an important topic. It's worth going over some of this again, maybe looking at it slightly in new ways, but this idea of blessing matters. If you would recall, perhaps from a few weeks ago, if you were here, um, a blessing that is for you to bless another person involves three components. The first component is that you convey to the person you're going to bless by word and by deed that you are thrilled that they are part of your life. That the fact that they're in your life gives you energy and gives you life itself, life and on your own. And so you convey that to them. The second part is that you speak well of them. And the third part is that you're willing to give up some of your life to help them in theirs. If you think about it, all three of those components are in this story. That, that, that voice that Jesus hears very much speaks well of him and very much conveys a message to Jesus that that God is thrilled. And certainly, even though it does seem a little odd, it's not, we're not entirely sure what it means for Jesus to receive the Holy Spirit in that moment, whether that was something new or, or just in a new way or in a more powerful way, but certainly that is God's, God's helping him, God giving him resources. And, and what happens after this? Jesus is blessed and because he has been blessed, he is able to go out and bless lots and lots of other people. It makes his ministry possible. The problem with this topic always, though, is as you talk about it to people, so many people just don't have anything in their particular li in their life that matches up with this. And, and so if you're sitting here thinking like, well, I don't know that anything even close to that's ever happened to me, I can assure you, you are not alone. You are probably in the majority here. I can tell you a couple incidents in my own life, uh, the, probably the most powerful one, I don't think I am able to explain to you well enough to be helpful. So let me tell you about just a small moment. The graduation, uh, my graduation day from college. I went to this small liberal arts college, a Florida Southern College over in Lakeland. Got a terrific education from them. But I was a math and physics major and the math department was small and the physics department was very small. It amounted to two professors and one, one major. So at the, end of, at, at the end of four years, I had taken a great number of classes from this gentleman, uh, Dr. James Stamper, and on the day of graduation, after it was all over, and you know, I was just sort of out in the courtyard talking to my parents, Dr. Stamper came over to me and shook my hand and congratulated me, but more importantly than that, he very much conveyed to me how pleased he was that I had been there for the last four years. He was pleased with my work, he was just pleased with me that I had been able to be there. And certainly he had spent four years giving up a lot of himself for my education. And so that is my, probably my best, easiest to explain moment of blessing. But as you think about, well, like, but I don't, I didn't get any blessings. And, you know, and, and, and the thing is, you know, like Jesus, once you're blessed, then you can bless others. Where does, where does that leave us? Especially those of us, myself included, who never really got a meaningful blessing, blessing from my dad or ladies, perhaps from your mother. 
you know, just didn't, wasn't there. Like in my case, I, I, I picture my dad blessing me in a whole lot of puzzle pieces. And if I put it together, I could say, yes, he did. But there was never the moment, if you will. So where, did, where does that leave us? Well, if you may remember, the solution to this is that we get to be blessed by blessing other people. We get to be blessed by blessing other people. Now, years ago, I, I could not have explained this to you in this way, in any way, shape, or form, but because of what Dr. Stamper did for me, um, all those years that I worked at Tampa Catholic High School, after graduation, and the kids and their families would all be outside, whatever the venue was, and they would just be standing out there talking and milling around, I would go out, and I would just work my way through that crowd. And I would shake the hands of as many of those students as I could and congratulate them and try to explain to them in some way that we were thrilled that they had been there with us for four years and that wished them the best going forward. In that small way, I, again, I couldn't have explained it to you or used this term then, but in a small way, I was trying to bless those kids. And... And of course, some kids, I'm sure, they don't remember that. Maybe the vast majority of them don't remember that little moment. Some, I suspect, do. But I don't know that that is the important part. The thing that I noticed about all those graduation nights was how it made me feel. Because in some way, in that moment of, of encountering those, those teens in that way, I was, this blessing that I was trying to give them was coming around, if you will, and blessing me. And that was my taste, if you will, of this idea that if we bless others, then we get blessed. And when we start doing that, then you get on this kind of upward spiral. You're being blessed, you bless others, that blessing blesses you, and you just keep going up. And so many of us, we're caught in the exact opposite cycle. We were, or we still are being, if you will, cursed. That is, people tell us by word and action they don't want us around, they don't speak well of us, and they don't help us. And because of that, because that's what we're taking in, we have a tendency to do that to other people. And so then we end up in this very negative spiral. And it just goes down. And if you've ever had one of those days where you're just kind of feeling the weight of everything, that's probably what's going on. But if you and I can begin to really actively work at blessing others, you can reverse all that. So I'll tell you, it's easy enough to start with. I mean, you know, grandparents, those of you who are the grandparents, this is like falling off a log. You know, you can bless those grandkids without even trying. You know, because they walk through the door, of course you're thrilled to see them, and you show that, and you convey that to them, and you always speak well of them. And of course, it's after Christmas, you're probably paying the credit card bill of all the presents you bought them. So... So, you know, like, that's easy, and I, I suspect most of us have people in our lives that it's easy to bless. Maybe we need to be a little more, in, um, little more conscious of doing it, you know, so that we don't think, oh, yeah, well, of course they know. Maybe, maybe we need to be very careful about making sure we show it. But then you just want to move along. You know, well, who else? Who's forgotten, if you will, in your life? Who just assumes? Who do you just assume know that, you know, that knows that you care for them? And maybe you need to be more intentional with them and try to really, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make an effort in this, in this week to bless this person. And make sure they know they're being blessed. And then as you get better at this and you start working your way along, you know, you, you could get to the really, really tricky part, which is trying to do this to people you don't like, people who disagree with you, people you would consider your enemies, because the good Lord calls us to that too. But there again, I think if you, as we work on this, maybe as you get better at it, you get to the point where you can figure out a way to, you know, speak well of your enemies, to be glad they're there. That sounds impossible, but
but maybe not, and that maybe you'd be willing to help them, even though you don't like them or they're not, they're not agreeing with you on some issue, whatever it is. But imagine what that would be like if you spent your, your day, your, as you lived out your life, you just blessed people, no matter who they were. You know, what a wonderful upward spiral that would be. And you'd have a taste. I am sure of this. You'd have an absolute taste, maybe a big mouthful of what Jesus got to experience on this day. Can you imagine this? To have this voice come from heaven saying, you are my beloved son and you I am well pleased. I don't think there's any reason why the good Lord could not and would not want to say that same thing about you and I if we bless other people.